Hey guys, welcome back to another Good Game Empire video. And in this video, we will be talking about dwellings. So, many people will say that you should demolish your dwellings when you reach level 70, because you can just loot more from nomads and samurais and just attacking towers in your outer realms. I am going to discuss whether or not it is worth keeping around your dwellings or even building new ones after you have reached level 70, how many coins you can get from them, and if the impact on your food production is worth it. Now, first off, if you had, if you went to the most drastic possible measure and, and put dwellings in all your castles, like filled up all your castles completely with dwellings, like two thirds of the way and just leaving a couple production buildings to produce food left, then you could produce roughly 3 million coins daily from just taxes. Now, that is a ton, but you have to remember that you're basically giving up any food production whatsoever. So, most players are not going to want to do that. Another option that you could think about is filling up one castle or outpost just completely with dwellings. Now, I don't think this is the best idea, because, for one, that castle now becomes basically useless. If I, say, filled up one of my outposts with it, then I might make, let's see, um... 400, 500,000 coins daily, so I'd make a million coins every other day, which is still a lot, but I mean, you can get that from nomads or samurais pretty quickly. So, what, it might be worth it if you did it, say, in winter, the winter realm, but I'm still not sold on the idea, as that would make it harder for you to get charcoal, and I just don't think that filling up a castle entirely with dwellings is the way to go. Now, there is one more other option, having a couple of your dwellings in each of your castles. This would give you about 100,000 coins daily if you had roughly 12 neomax level dwellings in each castle. It's not a lot, but it is a decent amount, and it's useful if you're running low or you ran out of money, say you were overly ambitious as the Technicus, or you were in a long war, then this would make it a lot easier to recover if you were at zero gold instead of just having to wait for alliance or war troops because you don't have enough gold to recruit units and use those to go attack samurai or nomad camps or whatever. But that is kind of a niche use. Um, it will serve as a nice supplementary income, and it won't affect your food production too much if you have castle gardens in the rest of your castle space. I do not, because I have hideouts I, um, built, because I'm in a tough wall. Um, but once I am out of this wall, which should be happening relatively soon, I will be getting rid of the hideouts, and these dwellings will not have a huge effect on my public order. They will have a small effect, though. Now let's talk about the last option, just using no dwellings. This is what most players will recommend you do. This is a perfectly viable method to play the game. You do not need dwellings, as it is actually far more efficient to simply loot nomad, samurai, and barbarian, cultist, and desert towers. They just give a ton of coins. And if you're an active looter, you'll get a lot more coins. From that, with the extra food production, from not having the dwellings lower your public order, than just the tax from the dwellings themselves. However, I think whether or not you build dwellings really comes down to how often you play the game. I recommend that if you have 1 million weekly loot or up, it is completely insane for you to try to fill a whole castle with dwellings. If you have 5 or 10 million loot or up, then I suggest you probably don't need dwellings at all, except for maybe when you 
are out of coins and you just need some way to start getting back up slowly. That would be the one use that active looters have for them, but you don't need a lot for that. Now, that's mainly my video on dwellings. Um, there is some stuff to note. There are some technologies in the research tower for dwellings, which you will find if you look for them. You can find one here, the interest rates in bait for research. And in advanced research, there is a levies one. And there is also a hall of legends, defensive hall which gives you more armed citizens and militia. So one final thing we'll want to talk about before I leave for the end of this video is are dwellings economical in a sense of not only their taxes, but their defense units they make. Because if you have the technology research, you can actually get pretty decent defenders from dwellings. Militia. Now let's go to my castle where I currently have my most highly upgraded dwellings to look at an example of this. Most of these things are upgraded to level 9, as you can see. And how many militia will I have? I'll have 11 in the courtyard and 100 or so on the castle wall, so a bit over 100 militia. If you look at their defense stats, they're not great, but they're roughly one quarter as good as a normal defender. So these dwellings will give you roughly 25 extra defenders. However, each dwelling gives a noticeable penalty to public order. So they're saving you about 75-100 food in defense scoops, but I would think that they're usually causing more than that in a DC. So if you're just looking for them as a way to get food efficient defenders, this isn't the way to go. Although combined with the tax revenue, it might be worth it if you don't do that. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and see you next time.